good to see you here paul tranny and yes we're gonna be doing some hand lettering like it says there so good to have you here good to see you gary and cindy and alberto tim alexander all my good friends so uh, fantastic hello paco uh, <laughs> so yeah pretty fun uh, broadcasting from beautiful denver colorado we're gonna be doing some hand lettering which is why i'm holding this got my little uh, good old Apple Pencil. So we'll be doing some hand lettering actually using uh, Illustrator. We're gonna use some Photoshop and uh, we're also going to use some Fresco. So mainly Illustrator. Uh, but good to have you here. Uh, feel free to say hello in chat. Always like hearing from people. Um, and yeah, it's a beautiful day here in Denver if you like rain, because it's been raining. But uh, hopefully today finds you well. It's gonna be a packed one just so you know. Uh, on Adobe Live. Of course, you have me for a couple hours. Big thank you to Claudia for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Get involved there because uh, we'll be reviewing some of those designs tomorrow. Hand lettering and XD, Jesse Showalter's up 1130. And then Howard's going to dive into some, some UI UX design and hopefully leak some things that are coming soon is my hope. That's what I'm trying to get out of him, but it'll be fun. It'll be a fun day. That's for Monday and Tuesday. We're gonna switch it up Wednesday, Thursday, uh, and then Friday is also gonna be different, but uh, I'm thankful that you're here. Valentine, Jeff R in the house. Andy's in the UK, fantastic. Mia says it's raining in Michigan as well. So yeah, honestly, I feel like rain, it's like very much like unlike Colorado to get a lot of rain. Uh, okay. Fantastic. All right. Good to know, Tim. Thanks for that little heads up. Uh, there we go. Let's see. Let's just go ahead and switch it up here. Tim, tell me if this uh, helps matters for the audio. Okay, so should be in both channels now. Cool, give me confirmation, be fantastic. Bra Brady is right up the street from me in Boulder, Colorado, just north of me. Uh, I'm down in, uh, good, that fixed it. It might come in and out. I'll make sure I fix that in the other little uh, channels and various things as well. Uh, but yes, so let's dive into this. I have a fun little project right here. I kind of wanted to talk about hand lettering. So the difference between hand lettering and calligraphy and uh, all that stuff, right? Just kind of the differences between them. Calligraphy basically is the art of writing letters, as you can see right here. So if you want to get really good at calligraphy, sure, do so. I happen to have a pen right here that I could show you. Um, the great thing is, is like for calligraphy and also hand lettering, if you want to, if you want to go old school, you can use some of these uh, kind of low tools right here. So you can see right here, this is a nice water brush. We can see, you can hardly even see it actually. <laughs> Here's this water brush. It's an aqua wash water brush and then you use paint. So it's kind of like your, um, you're, you're literally watercoloring, but that's what calligraphy kind of is, is like brushing on letters. In which case, yeah, you can use traditional brushes, of course, pens. I'll even use markers as well. I have a Sharpie over here that I'll use when it comes to like calligraphy. But calligraphy really starts to veer into hand lettering pretty quick as you start adding all those fun flourishes and making it more decorative. So, uh, oh, it's on the left again. Hopefully that fixed it. I don't know, maybe it did, maybe it didn't, it probably did not. Yes, it did not fix it. I apologize, Tim. Thank you so much for all your help. You are a winner in my book. And, uh, okay. okay, let's just jump back to my screen anyways. Okay, so this is gonna be the art of drawing letters. This is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna draw letters. All right. Good now. It should be in both. Tim, give me an okay. It should be all right in both now. Um, I, Cause I swear I didn't touch a thing. Little, little adjustments we need to do. Uh, Tim, give me a thumbs up if that's all right, but I'm gonna um, move on now. Fantastic. Cool. 
just the other shots might be tweaked a little bit. Uh, use typography, by the way. Like, it's the art of using those letters that you made. So we can actually go in by the time, uh, you know, if we want to, if we want to actually create a whole alphabet, like I've done right here, right? We can draw out an alphabet and turn it into its own font. Uh, a lot of times I'll actually use something called font self maker okay so you can start with calligraphy or um, some hand lettering and use font self maker to turn that into a font which is what i'm la launching now this is an add-on uh, for illustrator it's really pretty easy to use pretty amazing so you get the idea fantastic jordan give me the thumbs up thank you my friend cool let's dive into this actually what i want to actually dive into is actually using <laughs> using my iPad and using a little bit of Fresco. Can we do that? So Adobe Fresco, for those of you who may or may not know, really allows you to uh, illustrate naturally, draw naturally, do calligraphy naturally. I also encourage you from uh, inspiration, you can go to Behance. Of course, you're on Behance, hopefully. For those of you on YouTube, jump over to Behance.net forward slash live, that's where I am. That's the chat I'm looking at, okay? Sachin and Karina and everyone. Um, but you could just do a search for hand lettering in there or calligraphy, and that's how you would go and get inspired. So go and get inspired, get some ideas. Know that s sort of hand lettering comes down to a number of things that we just need to kind of keep in mind. What are the main things? It's really this X height, right? I wanna make sure there's consistency with my letters. Things are gonna get look sloppy if uh, the letters are like all over the place, okay? And by the way, every rule I say, I encourage you to break, okay? Because there just needs to be consistency with the letters. If you have consistency with the strokes, you can actually move the baseline, but you do need to kind of understand what you're doing. You need to understand, of course, the X height. Uh, we're gonna have the ascenders up here, uh, that we can play with, the descenders down here, we have different little bowls and stems, all go with good old lettering. And for those of you who uh, may or may not know, I can go into presentation mode in Illustrator, since this is an Illustrator mainly stream. This is illustration, uh, excuse me, this is presentation mode. It gets rid of all the junk that I happen to have on the sides uh, that I might have drawn. Okay, so this is the fun stuff that I think I'm gonna dive in, fresco, start to do, uh, if that works for you. Yeah, I love the, uh, I love everything about this. I did not make this illustration and I wish I did. Okay, but let's kind of jump over to good old fresco, if we can, right? We're gonna pull some things in from some different areas. Let's move this off to the side and uh, should be nice and easy to see. We could do a number of things. Uh, based on what you just saw, what you can do is you can you can actually kind of draw your own lines. We have different uh, lines that you can draw in Fresco. If you wanna sort of make your own baseline, X height, A center, sort of D center lines, you can do that if you want to. Or what you can do is you can actually get out there plenty of fun little, as I switch over, you can go ahead and get different grids. Um, you can find different grids online and basically load those in. So that's all I would typically do is like take that instead of being free form, because I want to do something like, you know, make. I'm using the watercolor brush. Oops, wait for it. There we go, this is just free form text that I drew on with the watercolor brush. I love the watercolor brush, you could see it bleed. So rather than, you know, I could use my, uh, my little watercolor water brush or I can actually use Fresco and I get those same properties. Uh, you notice this is really tough to read, wouldn't you agree? I would say it's a little tough to read, right? So I might consider doing some other things. Like, actually, let's just turn that off. We can try that again. And what I'll do a lot of times is I'll have that layer 
turn on that layer and we'll take this down, this opacity down. Cause I'm like, I never, you're never gonna nail it on the first time. There's uh, calligraphers and uh, hand letterers that wanna show you how to nail it the first time. Chances are they've already done it six times as part of their practice. And, um, and then you're seeing the final result. So use that sort of previous examples. That's literally what I do on papers. I will trace things or just like put this underneath another piece of paper and go over it again to where I get it just right. Uh, yeah, so Fresco does rock. Fresco rocks, by the way, just clicking in here. This is a live watercolor brush. As you can see, it's the round detail. We'll get into some of the other ones as well because we know that there are vector brushes that we could potentially work, right? So let's go in here, boom, 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 boom. The only rule I'm keeping in mind, and again, this fits with the theme. It's all about like making things happen, which is why we do these live streams. We want, we just want to inspire you to just like do stuff and don't be afraid basically is what it comes down. But it fits with this whole message of what I'm trying to do. The text says, conveys the message basically. Okay, I have another another thing I'm working on that I'm excited about, uh, but I will show you that later. Um, also, I wanted to kind of uh, also let you know about the fact that there is, that's right. We're gonna have chat and win in about 20 minutes. So don't forget about that as well. So here we go, diving back into this, we have make, these are all caps, right? I could also do a initial caps as well, but I want this to be bold and in your face. This is the problem. My uh, TH in the, so text has one job in front of it, which is to convey a message in writing. So if it's not legible, not so much, didn't work out too well, right? You kind of, I don't know. I don't want to say failed, but the, te the text is not doing its job. I'm doing this on a different layer so I can move it if I need to, right? Anytime I add, this is actually a slab serif that I'm, that I'm adding. This adds more information, which might be more detail, which could make it harder to read, or it could make it look just like more elegant. I think it's super fun to add those. T-H-I-N. Let's make it like a puzzle. It all kind of fits together. S, like that, make things, new layer, happen. Happen fast, happen quick. That's why I like, I love, for those of you who know me, know that I love the watercolor brush and I gotta branch out a little bit, don't I? What's up, Fruit Pixels in the house? Good to have you here. Uh, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Will a fresco ever be available for Windows? I don't know the official answer, but honestly, we're working on it. Uh, if you I would say a good way to foretell the future is to look to the past and look at look at uh, look at like even Adobe's track record. We'll release things on um, typically on on Mac or iOS, and then we'll bring it to Windows. But we have to make sure there's an interest out there for Windows. So. Uh, so okay, that looks not bad taking this. I'm so happy to be working digitally because I can come in and adjust this accordingly. Maybe it's like that. Let's take happen, right? That's kind of hard to read. Let's move that over, click done. That's mm, not bad, right? Uh, oh, thank you, Ve uh, Fresco being available for Surface Pro. Fantastic, okay, cool. Taking this and, so I'm in Fresco, check this out. Hopefully everybody can see this. I feel like zooming in on this. Right over here, look, I can take this layer and I can drop it on that previous layer. And now I'm making this all part of one unit because the whole thing needs to move over like so. So since they're now grouped, I can kind of move that over like that and click done. Okay, so let's move on. Let's add a new layer. We're gonna take this, uh, turn that off. Maybe turn this one on again. And now I wanna get into the vector brush, okay? Cause we're trying out different things right here. Um, yeah, let's just do this really fast. Again, it's all about making things happen, which is why I'm gonna go into the basic taper brush. We're gonna see it's gonna taper off, kind of like the watercolor brush. We also have this uh, basic terminal. Again, it's gonna have that different width based on um, your angle. But right in here, look, I can actually change the angle that I have that chisel at, 
right? So this is really cool depending on how um, uh, I'm doing this. So Lisa, by the way, I'm just using, this is actually Fresco and I, I apologize. I'm gonna jump into Illustrator on the desktop very soon, um, but this is just Fresco. But this is vector, that's the point, right? Uh, again, I still like the basic taper. I'll go in there, select that. This is what I love. I can tilt it this way so I can have this at a slight angle. Again, I'm using Apple Pencil. I also have Paper-like, which is a cover for my iPad, so it has a little bit of sort of grip to it, so it's not so slick. Uh, Lisa, you are great. Can I just say, Lisa, I'm happy you're here. Everybody welcome Lisa. Welcome, Lisa. <laughs> So check this out, boom, boom, right? Okay, this is gonna get really thick because again, look at the size of my brush, it's at 21. So it might get really thick because it's all based on that pressure, but it could be really fun because again, I just wanna move through this as fast as possible because there are more things I wanna do today. Ah, love these lines. Let's even take this down a touch. So I can see that a little better. Ugh, press too hard, undo, press too hard, undo, N, G, S, that S is a little thick. So notice how I started to slow down a little bit on these second letters. I'm going to change the size of this down a little bit, G, S, work it, work it, P. B, E, N, done. Make things happen, because that's what we're trying to do every day. I'm just trying to do my job and not, and stay healthy. Eric's in the house. Good to have you here, Eric. This is the great thing about this, like I messed up on this part, right? I could always clean that up. I can go in here, select A, uh, oops, boop. Select a vector brush or a vector layer, by the way. So notice how these layers are different, right? Right over here, this has a little dot. It says, hey, you know what? I'm a vector layer. These other ones I did, hey, I'm a pixel layer, okay? But I notice I kind of need to clean this up. I could clean this up on my um, desktop. Oh, by the way, you ready for this, everyone? So I didn't mention this earlier, but today we are actually going to do portfolio reviews. So if you didn't notice already, off to the side over there, there's the chat, there's the portfolio review tab. And uh, so we'll be reviewing portfolios. I started at, uh, yeah, in like an hour, roughly, okay? Portfolio reviews today, just to remind you. Okay, so I could clean up a little bit of this. I can always clean it up on desktop. Um, but I wanna do actually a couple more things as well, because this is gonna lean into tomorrow, and I also wanna talk about 36 days of type, okay? 36 days of type is just doing a letter a day um, and uh, all the numbers uh, for the next 36 days, okay? So, so we're gonna make things happen when it comes to 36 days of type as well. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm doing so much. Let's turn that off. Let's just add a new layer. What I'm actually doing, by the way, we're gonna transfer all these to my desktop, but I'm gonna do a couple quick uh, other things. Uh, Alberto, thank you, we're on letter F. So, let me rewind. Let me remind you, remember how I pulled in those photos, or I have those photos? Um, and you can see right here, this is just a photo um, of lined paper. So I could actually use this as my guide. And I'll typically come in here, take this opacity down. And if you're doing 36 days of type, this is really helpful as well, because I could actually make sure my ascenders and descenders are all just like correct. I'm doing something in all like famous artists. Um, and uh, so I'm just gonna, I guess I'll just start with a couple. Actually, let me show you this, ready? Since we're on F, by the way, search for 36 days of type. It's actually 36 days of type.com, I'm pretty sure. But since we're on F, <sighs> F was not the word I was gonna do. <laughs> or the letter. Ah, 
Let's go, let's go Angelico Fra. So F is for Fra. So this is typically what I do. I pick a subject, like last year I did nature images. Uh, this year I'm taking an artist, I'm taking their last name, whatever their last name starts with, we'll do Fra. So it could be Angelico Fra. That could be what I'm actually illustrating right in here. Go in, uh, we could do the whole name if we want to. Oops. Can't draw on a hidden layer. Thank you so much. So this is where we have different lined paper. So this shorter stack, I think letters look more elegant um, when uh, the X height is smaller. The reason it's called X height, because it's the letter X, lowercase, that's that height right there. So I already forgot the guy's name. So let's just pull this up, disregard that. I'm still here, there I am. Let's pull this up off to the side. Uh, we're gonna do fra, just so you can see that together. For those of you who are also interested, I'm actually using something called Reflector to uh, to mirror my uh, iPad on my desktop. So let's do Angelico. Ah, oh, I keep on tapping on the wrong way. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, there we go, boom, added a new layer. Undo that. Let's zoom out a little bit. Undo, undo. Let's take this size down a little bit as well. Let's work through this. You know, I'm gonna do this much faster. You ready for this? A N G. There we go. We'll add some fun flourishes. You get the idea. Okay. Cool. There we have Angelico Fra. Not crazy about it. You can see some earlier ones I made of the previous um, artists right up here. Let's kind of move this to the top so everybody can see it. Uh, this is kind of what I'm going for. So I already have an idea for this. I did this with a watercolor brush. Guess what? I could take this, whether it's a raster or vector. Um, I can go out, I could go to publish, right? I can export this quickly as a PNG. So I'm just gonna do this frame. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit cancel. I'm gonna turn off that lovely background. Those lines don't need those anymore. I just want this stuff. In fact, Angelico Fra, which again, yeah. Can we just be honest with you with each other? This was horrible, right? Again, these other ones look a little bit better nonetheless. I'm going to take these. I'm going to export them out. I'm going to export it as a PNG file. In fact, let's do this. Let's do you one better. Turning off that background, now it's on trans it's uh, transparent. And now we'll export this as a ping file to my desktop. Bing 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 bing. Sending. Where is it? Oh, thank you very much. Fresco. Here it is turned off that background layer, this is ready to go, okay? Uh, Bernini would be good too. Bernini. <laughs> um, I did Botticelli because of Botticelli's Venus, and we know Venus on the half shell was basically like the mascot or logo of Illustrator for many, many years. So that's why I le le leaned toward that. Let's take a couple of these others really fast. exporting just doing a quick little there we are one more time this time what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually turn on this lovely vector layer right here make things happen this already looks pretty darn good right and it's not me I'm not a I'm it's not that I'm good I think Fresco is just that good. I have smoothing turned on a little bit. Usually it's on by default, but it allows you to just have smoother strokes. So keep that in mind. Uh, in this, this case, I'm gonna export as a PDF. When I export this as a PDF and I'm using a vector layer, it's going to give me those vector lines. Cool. About six minutes for chat and wins. 
uh, up. So it's basically we're gonna give you some sticker mule stickle stickers. I think we're gonna give you like 100 stickers just because we can, okay? Just for fun. All right, fantastic, that is done. Where are my files, where are my files at? I hope this wasn't in the way, but we can see, here's the vector one. Oh, are you not excited? Uh, Alexander, you guys are being too kind to me. You know, honestly, that's why I'm focused on this phrase on makes things happen, because it's just little things that you do every day, just like the um, 36 days of type, little things that you do every day, it just starts to compound upon itself. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what happens. So you realize you just wake up one day, it's like, wow, I kind of know how to not screw up as much, <laughs> right? Thank you, Tim. 100 custom die cut, three by three inch sticker mules, stickers. Would be fantastic. So we'll do that in about five minutes. Let's not forget about the schedule. We've got Howard coming up um, in a couple hours. He's doing a UX UI takeover. It's going to be fun. Uh, we also have an XD Daily Creative Challenge today as well. So, um, all right. So this looks pretty good. We can see that this is, thank you very much, it is vector. It's clean. Right, we can kind of take a look at some of these lines. Guess what, I wanna move this over a little bit. Let's actually select it. See these individual letters. There's also something, that weird background frame that you could just delete. Sometimes they'll come in as like compound paths. It just depends on what you're making. But this actually comes in the way I want it to, right there. All right, we could see that. We can see this is, looking like it has a lot of points, right? So I need to clean that up and I need to maybe space some things out. Let's kind of move this over, right? I like how they're independent. So I wanna point out, Mel, that it uh, made these individual vector shapes, which is exactly what I wanted. If it would have combined these right here, I would have been like horrified. I'm like, don't do that. Ah, uh, Valentine, I got more things to show you guys. Oh, I have so many, <laughs> I have so many fun toys. I have a moleskin notebook that will allow you to draw and it will digitally appear on the app that you can then send to Illustrator. So that's for tomorrow. Paul Alvarez in the house. Good to have you here, my friend. All right, so, um, you know, obviously lots of lines aren't gonna be perfect. This looks horrible. It gets all crazy right there, right? Look at how many points I have. Can you see all those? Look at all those points, lots of points. So this is when we get into the cleanup process, okay? What's up, Tim? Uh, uh, so typically what I, what I could do, uh, this is a new feature or actually um, a redesigned feature, just so you know, and It is the simplify, right? So in some cases, does Illustrator need many more features? Some of these just need to work better. Let's uh, take a look. By the way, all the strokes are separate, by the way. So simplify, this has been redesigned, simplified. It does it automatically, right? That's what happens. It does it, sets it about right here. This is the difference. Again, we don't need words. Add more points if we want, 38, take it down to three, right? So again, we could look at the shape, 38 down to three. Uh, and not only that, you can go into uh, the simplify dialog and dial this in even more. So if you wanna, if you've lost some of that, uh, oh, sorry, um, some of the character of it, you might consider working on the corner point, point angle threshold, right? If things get a little funky. So you can get into more of those details right in here. Uh, I'll kind of take that down a little bit. That kind of does a little bit of some of it, but I have this wonky end right here. So what I do is I go in here and I'll hit N for pencil. <laughs> Let's go into the pencil tool options right in here. And again, two minutes before chat and win. I'm gonna go into edit select path. So again, pencil tool, double click on it, Edit selected pass, just turn that on, okay? And I'll show you what that looks like. Because that means as I go in here, uh, I don't know why my icon actually changed. 
Um, but I will redraw. See how it looks like an X? When I roll over it, it says a plus line. So it's gonna kind of like add to the current line. So I can come in and just kind of round that out like so. Does that make sense? So it has an X here and then a plus here. Um, I think, oh, there we go. Every day I swear I'm learning something. You think you know it all. <laughs> I, just real, I just realized this also happens in Photoshop. If you have the caps lock turned on, you're gonna have uh, just the crosshairs and you're not gonna have the icon. Turn off caps lock and then you get the actual pencil. Okay, so that's what's going on there. But either way, you could see the asterisks as I roll over it. I could redraw these line segments like so and just smooth that out. But to answer an earlier question, these are all individual shapes that I can work with, right? This gets a little funky down here, right? I could select that. Oops. N for pencil. Let's just kind of round that out like so and we're eliminating a little bit of this confusion, tightening it up in spots, making this, trying our best to make it look a little bit better, but not too clean. Because we want to stick with the spirit of the saying, okay? All right. Yes, exactly, turn off the caps, uh, thanks. Same thing for the brush. It drives me crazy when it happens with the brush in uh, good old um, Photoshop, which again, I plan on getting into, probably won't get into it till tomorrow. Um, you get the idea and uh, fantastic. Oh wait, and what's this? Looks like it is time for chat and win. I'm sorry about my audio. My audio might be a little weird but uh, we'll dive into that right now. Say, tell me your favorite artist in chat if you can. Say hello, tell me your favorite artist in chat. Thank you. we're back and I want to say congratulations to Dama Chan. It happened fast, but Dama Chan says me. Dama Chan is going to get uh, 100 sticker mule stickers, three by three stickers. So congratulations. Sorry about the audio. We'll switch back to my screen and uh, don't forget about portfolio reviews as well. Cool. We're back. All right. Lauren Hom is my favorite as well. I see you, Brandy. Ah, oh, uh, love Lauren. Just like good person, really good at, really good at things, you know? All right. Let's continue on, shall we? All right. I think this looks actually pretty good. Now, what if I just didn't talk the rest of the hour? You'd be bored out of your mind. All right. You're not, uh, you're good. All right. Sorry about that little break. I just need a little bit of coffee. I can finally move this out of the way. Isn't this fun though? Is I could work freeform Guess what? There's another thing that I didn't get into that I still need to uh, take a look at. No, I don't speak Chinese. Uh, English is my only ang language and uh, half the time I don't even speak that well. So bear with me. Uh, as you also know, just talking about ways to get content into Illustrator, we went over um, you know, using different lo-fi brushes and different things. Um, but in general, what I kind of wanted to point out is uh, capture as well. So Adobe Capture allows you to capture content that you might have actually already kind of drawn out, as you can see here. I did some bigger letters right here. Michelle, it's Michelle on a Monday. Michelle's making Mondays fun, right? 
Uh, updates on Illustrator for iPad. Uh, the update is, I guess we're working on it, okay? So it's gonna take some time, just like with Photoshop on iPad. It's gonna take a while to port all that technology over, so you'll have to give us a second. A lot of you know Capture, but I think what we do is we sneak in uh, different little tools. And uh, then we don't tell you about them. So I want to kind of show you just a couple, one, one or two things. There we are, boom. Here's my iPad, right? And now I have my iPhone with good old, let's do this. I did a couple different things with, with some text. So I did all caps and then I did initial caps. There's a couple of things going on in here. Right up here at the top, I can invert the, I can actually capture the color. So this, oh wait, that's auto clean. Let's turn this on right up here you can actually capture the color and vectorize that color as well. So that's fairly new. I wanna make sure you guys know about it because you probably wanna turn that uh, off and just make it black and white in this case, okay? So that's what I'm doing now, kind of pointing at this. Remember, I have this auto clean up turned on, auto clean applied, there it is. Let's go ahead and hit okay, let's crop this. It just grabbed vector, vector shape, of this text as we can see right here. Okay, I, this is the magic button, by the way. Uh, yes, Sibylla, I'm gonna do portfolio reviews, not to worry. I think I actually need to do them in about uh, an hour, okay? So we have some time there. Portfolio reviews in an hour. Uh, I'm gonna hit smooth. The smooth button is just like the make it better button, right? It actually made these letters look nice and smooth. A lot of the things that honestly that I was doing on my desktop, right? I was smoothing things out. This will largely do it for you. So I think it's super cool and really helpful. Let's get this out of the way. Sorry about that. And uh, again, it is pretty rad as this says as well. Um, Smoothing is on, there's the smoothing on, right? So this does a lot of cleanup that we would expect. Thank you, Paco knows what's up. Rarely is there a make it better button <laughs> in, our, in our world, okay? And not for everything, I think it made this T look a little funky, but the great thing is I can hit save, we'll go right up here, we're gonna save this as uh, Radiant 2. So I might have one. Saving it in this CC library. So I'll move this over right over here. Let's open up that CC library. Boom. Fonts is what I happen to have it in. I got a ton of crazy stuff in here. Um, and those are mostly grouped. So let's close that. Switch back over. There it is. Saving to that same particular folder. Save. Boom. What's happening? It's gonna save it and it will pop up like right over here. See, I already did this once before. That's why I called this number two. We can see it appears. Cool, cool. <sighs> yes, I agree with Eric. Content aware fill tends to be a make it better button as well. Uh, so you can do this for hand lettering. You could really do this with anything. You can you can literally obviously like grab anything. I think Paco would be happy to know that I'm drinking out of this this path water <laughs> bottle, right? But you could always take something, grab it, like I'm doing, like so, and then start to clean it up. Maybe get rid of a lot of the stuff on the sides. Maybe I just want that logo. Well, I can just take that. Uh, logo if I care to. We'll just make this brush size a lot larger. You get the idea. You know how this works now, right? Path water for the win. All right, so uh, clicking done. I can sync that if it was any good, but you know what? It's not. So let's go ahead and hide this and go in here. So we have the fact that we're making things happen. And I'm happy you're here joining us today, Anthony. A full day today. We've got a lot going on internally and around the world, uh, but I'm glad um, that uh, you're here with me. Okay, so here's here's Make It Happen. I'm gonna save this, by the way. We're gonna save this as, since this is gonna be my main file now, desktop, Illustrator. Here we go. Uh, make it happen. There we are. 
again. Day one of day two, of, of excuse me, of two days uh, where uh, I'm just bringing content in at this point. So zoom out a little bit more, new layer, turning that off, dropping this in like so, because I want to actually compare these two. So we'll ungroup these. I really like, I don't even need that. I really love this, All right? Look at that. Bring that in a little bit. Ah, radiant. Ah, tell me you don't love this. I don't know. Is it hard to read? Right? This might be a case where this might be a little bit hard to read, right? I might need to extend down this R. Well, guess what? This is vector. I don't need to redraw it. I could just kind of extend that down like so. Try to get this to look a little bit more decent. Again, I, th I think it's kind of tough to read. This is... Who, who does this happen to? Do you ever like... Um, You'll be staring at something for so long that you like, you don't even know if it's, <laughs> it might be spelled right, but you have you ever misspelled something that you're working on and you'll work on it for a while. And then somebody will come by and be like, oh, you spelled radiant wrong. Like I've definitely done that before. And it's embarrassing. I got one job, spell things right. All right, so there we'll do radiant. I think what this needs, since we're talking about radiant, we want, the font to again mimic uh what the word's saying right so in this case i'd hit n for for pencil i guess in this case right for this pencil i can kind of draw on a line it actually needs to change a lot because these don't match okay thank you for making me feel better I, uh was that jordan <laughs> ah i hate it Ah, uh, hate it. All right, this is why, this is why I'm glad you're here, by the way, because I could potentially, I would share this, and honestly, I would use Adobe XD to export out, I mean, quote unquote, a prototype, not really, but basically to export out a link. Anytime I export out a link, it means I can sneakily go in there and change it later on, because as soon as I publish, or as soon as I send it to the client, that's when I realize something's wrong, right? That's when you really look at it like clearer eyes. So um, Howard's will hopefully we'll talk about this this afternoon and tomorrow is uh, that publishing feature. So, okay, let's get back to this. This isn't quite right. We'll go into properties panel. We'll go over here to the stroke clicking right there and we want to round the corners. So we'll see that happen. Boom. And uh, round the caps and round the corners, right? Because we're trying to mimic this right here. We're trying to make them look the same. They're not quite the same though yet, are they? Okay. Well, guess what? I can go in here. I can change uh, the width profile right right up here at the top. We'll change the width profile to something like this. This isn't quite what I want, but I'm showing you obviously what Illustrator does. It gives me this variance in stroke, but really I want to do that myself. So off to the side, see right over here, we're going to use the width tool. All right, Jennifer Poole needs a vacation. Uh, you know, I know there's like a lot of travel issues right now, but it's like the one time there's this stress from like things happening in the world. That's when you're like, you want a vacation. <laughs> uh, all right. So with tool, we can see we can adjust this all we want. So I can make this a little bit thicker here and I can make the stroke a little thinner as well. Okay. Like so. Um, from there, guess what? I can come in here and make this new, uh, uh, radiant profile like that, just with that variance and stroke if I want to. Okay. And for pencil drawing, this is what happens. And this is why I think I'm so thankful you're joining me today. Afroja, mm, much love to you as well. Uh, Look at this, I have to like, even though I saved that width profile, I gotta come up here and like, oh, where's that silly width? Oh, there it is. Oh, what was the stroke and all that stuff? And I get it, I can hit I and I can sample that and it will, you know, apply those properties to this, right? Because I want multiple lines. But really, I just wanted to draw, draw with that new line every single time, okay? So that's why I'm gonna show you this. Pro tip, it's like I called it, it's a little bit buried, but let's take a look at it right in here. We'll go in here and we're gonna turn this off in the appearance panel. 
Okay, so new art doesn't reset back to the basic experience, uh, appearance. So we're gonna turn this off. So the new art is always gonna keep your previous settings. Anytime I draw a line, it's gonna keep the previous settings. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Thank you so much, Michelle mentions like, you need to take a break, leave, come back. That's when you realize like all your errors. I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't agree more, honestly. Totally couldn't agree more. Because what you're doing is you're, you're just approaching it with fresh eyes. A lot of times flipping the, you just need to look at it differently, basically. Okay, so with that done, uh, N for pencil, draw. Oh, thank you very much. Radiant, making it radiant. Again, just a quick example. Not crazy about these lines. In fact, maybe I'll just draw them all again. Shoo. They all need to come from like that A. So that's where they're all coming from. And I would try to make them look like a circle, right? Maybe this line goes there, comes out right here or not. Again, we're just having fun today. We're doing some hand lettering because we can. And we're using Illustrator, Radiant. I get it, doesn't look that good right now. Can't look good all the time. Typically select all those, change the color. I'd probably wanna roll in with a little bit of a uh, color I don't even have. Cause that's always fun. There we go. I don't know, actually let's make it more of a gold, you get the idea. Cool, cool. Uh, how did you make the lines, the lines thicker? Just kind of quickly recap. N for pencil. Let's change the color back to what it will. And just so you know what this does, if I turn this on to new art has basic appearance, it resets it. Everything except for the color, right? And the size. So now I have this, actually, no, it does reset it back to the uh, to the size. So here we go. Here we are. Here's my stroke. Uh, I can use the width tool to add different widths, right? And I could have some fun with this. I could literally make this look like sound waves if I want to, right? Du, 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 right? Super fun what we can do right in here, just using the width tool. And for those of you who are in the know, honestly, this is why you watch, but I hold down the option key. I could actually drag in one side independently of the other, right? So I can bring that one in and make it look a little bit different. Why is this round right here? Do you know why that's round? Well, oops, did I just delete it? It is round because right over here in the stroke panel, we have the ends sent, set to um, a cap that's rounded, okay? Do you get that? So this is the width tool. That's what we're doing. You're using this width tool right here. Everybody see it, is it big enough? Is it big enough? I don't know. A fish bone. Yes, it's very cool. I could get into so much with this. Um, so it's fun, it's scalloped. I can save that with profile. Guess what? I already have uh, sound waves in here, <laughs> which I love, right? Here's a line. Let's add these fun sound waves, boop. Crank it up, crank up the volume. There you go, right? You could uh, get more advanced with this as well. Let's, let's kind of have some fun with this really fast. I may or may not do this right. Uh, I could take this, this could be like maybe green, take this side, bring it in like so. Uh, add a new stroke like so. This new stroke is gonna have a width as well. Zoop, expanding that out taking this side, bringing it in. For the second one, by the way, I need to change this and turn that off. Bring that in like that. And then change the color. Look at that. Oh, imagine that. Now we basically have a leaf. How is this made? Look, it is just one line. 
and yet it's a leaf. And guess what? We'll turn on or turn off new art has basic appearance. And then uh, I could go ahead and hit N for pencil. And now I'm drawing with this new uh, leaf line, as I'd call it, right? Pretty cool. Uh... Hopefully you can see everything okay. Sorry, everything was a little teeny for a second. You guys get that? Zoop. Again, I'll draw it out here. Zoop. Components of this line is in the appearance panel, I added a second stroke and then I changed the width profile just so the uh, width of the line is on one side. And this one, it's on the other side. Cool. What the what? Disregard that. Sorry, let's just, my camera sometimes takes a break. It's like, my camera was even blown away. It's like, whoa, I need to take a break. I gotta adjust my eyes, right? And this is really cool because I can always go back in. I actually kind of need to change this color a little bit. I'd probably tweak it to, I, I'm really into teal. So, I don't know. You get the idea. Cool. All right, let's move on. Yeah, the width tool is your, uh, will be your new best friend. Okay, 1030. And let's do this. I would say, just so you know, in about, yeah, I think that is right. In about 40 minutes, Hold on, in about 40 minutes, we are going to have portfolio reviews. So that is the plan. I think that will be pretty fun, just so you know. And uh, know that that is taking place uh, just use the portfolio review tab uh, outside of the chat tab. Sorry, that's misaligned. You get the idea. About 40 minutes we'll do uh, portfolio reviews. So that's why we have the portfolio submission deadline. All right, cool. <sighs> Whew, there's a lot going on here today. Lot going on. Uh, real fast, just so I can... Potentially review the schedule. Ah, found it. Cool. Here's the schedule. Just so you know, give myself a break just so I can take a uh, drink of water, uh, get involved with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges and the XD Daily Creative Challenges happening at uh, 1130. Suspense. We'll do more because you know what? We have captured so much content and now we get to play with it in Illustrator. So uh, yeah, I'll be hanging out for a bit. Jesse's up next. Howard's going to be up this afternoon. Show us some cool XD stuff. So again, I use even, even for just the prototyping, just for outputting, I would use it. All right. We're back. Boom, baby. I got everything fixed, I think. It's good when things are fixed, huh? Isn't that a good feeling? At least you think they are. But, um... Fantastic. Again, thanks for joining me today. Can you imagine I'm... Actually stalling is what's happening right now. That's what's happening, in case you're curious. I'm actually stalling a little bit. Because <laughs> you know what? I want to make sure you have some good music. Fantastic. Let's move on. Uh, dive into this. We have Radiant in here, which is not bad. Came from this illustration captured with Adobe Capture brought in like so. We still have this down here. Turning this on, we can see, make things happen, right? That we can start to play with as well. We can get a little bit more designery with it. Okay, and then I'll work on some of the other pieces that were brought in, that, that will be brought in. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it. 
So this is one thing I use, by the way. This is another pro tip, like the things that I use all the time. I'll go to File, New. I'm gonna have to save this maybe for another day, but I have something called Super Duper Powers. I have my own like starter file that has all my gradients. Cause you know what I was thinking? I was like, I, I need to use some gradients that I know I've made before, right? Well, that's what's in this starter file. Okay, so click Create. All you need to do is you need to put that in uh, your uh, like preferences like file. Um, I don't have it right now, but um, I'll have to show that to you later. So there we are, make things happen. Cool, we got that. Let's change the size of this, like so, like so, there we are. We can see, as I hold down the space bar, we can see the number of points that are in here, which is too many. So again, why, what would we do? We'd go in and make sure that this is simplified to a degree, like so, crank this over. We're gonna keep an eye on how it changes, by the way. So we're gonna make sure it doesn't change too much, right? 390, about 400 points is plenty, right? And that looks good. That is done. We won't worry about any of the settings. But this is already looking better. We'll shrink this down. We'll play with this a little bit more. Um, having a new layer, ellipse tool. Zoop. There we are. We're gonna give this, make this a nice circle. There it is. Okay, here's another pro tip. Okay, I'm gonna give you lots of pro tips. Little snafus, little things that you will get you hung up. Did you know when you paste things, check this out, I can cut, I can cut this, and there's this little feature that says paste remembers layers. So if you're really trying hard to paste something in a certain layer and you just can't, this is what it is. Paste remembers layers, turn that off. Don't remember layers, you're crazy. You know, now it's pasted below. Now I can go ahead and take all of this content after it's unlocked and change this to white, okay? Like I just said, we I use the super duper powers file, right? To keep me from creating gradients all the time. Selecting this circle will go into, sure enough, all these lovely swatches. Now I can kind of dive into these different gradients and see which one looks good from there. Open to suggestions on this. Uh, all right, so uh, let's take this. Let's take this. We'll edit this gradient. Mm. I don't know. Do I? Do you guys even like this? What do you think? I feel like this color, this needs to be RGB for one. Playing with these colors, just kind of adjusting these accordingly. There we go. We really need to crank up this, maybe this pink. Maybe this actually needs to be a little more pink or purple. What do you think everyone? Uh, so Jay's having a problem with rotation. Uh, it gets stuck and then freezes. I don't know if you're talking about actual shapes, right? I can draw this circle out. Let's add a different gradient. I'm, I'm like very much inspired by um, Adobe Live's like branding. So that's kind of where the inspiration for this is coming from, all right? Let's take this, let's make this radial, do something kind of like that. You get the idea. Uh, yeah, they remind you of spring. Well, it is raining today in Colorado, so I'm feeling, I'm feeling something like this. And again, just slight. I'd probably want to add some rings around these as well. <sighs> I 
Wait for it. There we are. There we are. Let's go back out a little bit. Take all this content, move it over. Make sure I grab the type. Ah, uh, add some texture. Oh, it's a great idea, Brandy. Ah, oh, you're brilliant. This needs a couple different things. I could either sell this as a sphere. I think texture is the right way to go because I'm taking hints from uh, Adobe Live, honestly. Is that okay? Again, they, it's a award-winning graphics, not to brag, even though I guess I am, uh, about the people who made this, which is Oddfellows. It's not even Adobe, it's Oddfellows, and they're fantastic. I think they're, I can't remember where they're located. <clears throat> Excuse me. Something like that. Taking this like that. Brandy wants some texture. I think she's exactly right. We're going to add some stars in the background as well. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. I'm so excited. Okay, so we take this. Let's kind of go in here. Um... Let's go into the effect gallery. Uh, texture. Film grain. Here's some nice film grain. I get it, it's really... This is the thing, when it comes to adding grain, as you may, or... Uh, Tim, you're hilarious. When it, I've noticed when it comes to adding textures, you really need to start thinking about your output because if I'm gonna output this to Instagram, a lot of this film grain really needs to be cranked up. That's why I had to shrink it really small because I wanna like make sure this grain shows up. Okay, so I really gotta crank this up like maybe 10. Uh, again, pick which ones you want. You can play with these. I've kind of ended up with film grain. It's probably gonna be my best. Yeah, that's probably gonna be my best bet. Okay, film grain, done, click okay. Uh, know that you can actually stack them as well, right? So there it is, we have a little bit of texture right there. Again, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, I'll do you one better too when it comes to texture. So I'll add some texture to this sphere, as we know. We'll go in here. We could apply the same film grain. Grain. It's uh, set to our uh, most recent one. Ah, uh, and it looks horrible. So let's go into film grain for this sphere. Ah. Okay, so this is this has happened to me before. It might give you this banding. I've totally had this happen before. So check this out. I'm going to click cancel. Are you ready for this? I'm gonna remove the film grain here, and this is something I was gonna do later anyways to punch up the film grain, but you can actually come in, you can take a an entire new layer. This new layer is gonna be set to like a gray, and we'll draw it over the top. I'm sure you already know what I'm gonna do right now. And then we'll apply film grain to this gray layer, okay? Don't worry, we're gonna go in and edit this as well, but we're gonna really crank this up a lot. It looks like it's already cranked up because it's so, we're zoomed, zoomed in so much. Yeah, let's crank it up. Let's make this look even more intense. Clicking okay, adding that film grainish, if you can see it. Again, sorry, this is kind of large. Let's change my document to RGB. So I'm gonna output this to Instagram. Uh, Dimitri says, looking terrible. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence. Thanks for the constructive criticism, <laughs> Dimitri. <laughs> You're killing me. Right in here. <laughs> this would be horrible if I was done with it. Okay, opacity. So that means, Dimitri, stick around for the whole thing. Actually, give me, give me advice. I'm open to suggestions. Since this is live, we can work on this together. I'm going to change this to something like overlay. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. So we've gotten rid of that banding and it just adds it over the whole thing. It even punches up that one that I did in the background, right? So again, uh, hats off to, I think it's Brandy. Brandy did this suggestion. Thank you so much, Brandy. I think it works out well. 
uh, and uh, is looking pretty cool. I would call this design done because we need to work on some other things as well. Cool. Exactly. <laughs> yes, it's very Adobe-esque. Paco's like, uh, geez, it's not like you've been working on the graphics. <laughs> it's not like you've been playing with the graphics all all Sunday or anything. And <laughs> no wonder this is embedded into your skull. <laughs> Uh, oh, I was going to do show you one more thing. It's like we want to do it uh, just it could use like a little bit more um, like little like sparkles. OK, just like some little just actually just little dots. That's all it really needs. Uh, by the way, I don't I think a lot of people know that actually there is a lens flare tool in here. If you kind of click in here, clear back in here, there is the flare tool, right? Uh, it's kind of it's it, it has a limited purpose, right? If I click, we could see it adds it right here. It's not really the style I'm going for, but can work for what you want to do. So it just adds too much smooth detail and it's not what I'm going for. Okay, if you take that same lens flare and you click once, you get the different settings for it. So yes, you can also control the settings as well. But I want something even simpler than what I would do there. I can actually jump in. I could use the star tool, right? For the star tool, if I click and drag, right? Hopefully you can see this. Let me actually zoom in. I love this texture, it's beautiful. Click and drag, there's my, hopefully you can see that. I'm uh, hitting my up arrow, I'm increasing the points, right? Down arrow, decreasing. Holding down the command key and then stretching out. I'm increasing the uh, drastic uh, angle of these different points. Okay, so I could do a cool burst like that. Maybe I want to make these the star type thing maybe a little bit smaller. Oh, and there I am off the screen. Uh, but here's the sort of the star that I've just made. Okay, got that. Got it. Got it. Sure, a little bling in the sky. Why not? Ah, <sighs> change that color to white. Okay, I'm going to do you one better, by the way. You ready for this? Yeah, it almost looks like, uh, yeah, maybe this texture looks like glitter. I'm not crazy about this. This is like, okay. I did want to show you something else that's really cool since you're joining me today. I'm going to do something crazy for you. I'm going to take the same star tool and we'll turn off that texture or that text. Right in here in the center, I'm going to change this stroke. You ready for this? This is my star. I'm gonna actually kind of bring it down to just a five-pointed star, get it kind of back to where it was. Okay, kind of like that. Okay. Uh, the option key will actually turn it into a traditional star as well, but this is what I wanna do. I'm gonna draw a star, but I'm gonna hold down the tilde key, which is the curvy line in the upper left of your keyboard. I'm gonna click and drag, boom, like that. I just did a click and drag, and now we have this cool, like, star constellation uh, that you could potentially use for fun. Yes, Ismail has it, buddy. I agree with you 100%. It just needs stars in the background. I think this was just fun to do <laughs> because I could. <laughs> My forehead is a little shiny. I could probably use some nice covers for these lights so they don't, they're not smacking me in the face so bad, but I hear you. So did everybody get that? Jordan, you get that? It's the tilde key. It's the wavy line. I should probably turn on Keycaster key so you'd see it, but you get the idea. Time travel. Okay, that wasn't even any of the stuff I wanted to do. We add complexity, but you know what? This design is honestly like a little bit more about simplicity right? I actually just want some little dots kind of around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be boring. Yeah, I wanted stars and I'm taking the boring ellipse tool. Yeah, I'm gonna. What? Little boop. Just this little guy. Just this little guy right here. For this little guy, I'm going to open up the symbol panel and I'm going to drop him right in here. And he's going to be known as star. Right, great thing is I could always change it later, right? And that's kind of part of the magic. Uh, that is done. That's my little dot, okay? That's a symbol. 
And right over here, I don't know if you use this. I don't know many people that, I don't know if people use it a lot, but the symbol sprayer tool, right? Selecting symbol sprayer tool. And then I'm adding those dots. That's typically what you get as I draw it out, okay? Double clicking on it. We can control, um, the size and other settings. But we basically have all of these crazy settings when it comes to the symbol sprayer. So let me just kind of, I could kind of spray some stars around this. Um, let's just do kind of something like that. We'll go to the symbol sizer tool because we want to resize some of these, right? I'm just adjusting these accordingly. We're just making a fun like little wave. We're gonna take this, we're gonna shift these around some more, maybe scatter them, right? Because I wanted randomness, but I didn't wanna have to copy and paste because you know why I'm lazy, right? I didn't wanna do a lot of copying and pasting, right? If we're worried about the, the settings for uh, pushing around the, um, for the symbol shifter, we can increase the intensity. Actually, you know, does it go above 10? It does not, it's actually maxed out at 10. Okay, but again, that's kind of what I'm doing right now is we can kind of push this around. You get the idea. Guess what? We could break these apart as well if we want to, but again, just kind of stretching those out like so. Symbol sizer tool. We could size some up. Holding on the option key, we shrink some down, right? Shrink some down. You get the idea. Cool. Ah. Uh, Cool, cool, cool. All right, we have just some fun. We just needed some fun texture. Um, I don't know, just some an added element. I don't, actually don't even think this will go in front. It'll probably actually go behind. So I might take this, paste it, bring it up, rotate it. You know, I'm just adding a little bit of texture back there. And this is the stars. So uh, less than 20 minutes before portfolio reviews. Let's move this behind that, something like that. Let's move that down. Uh, just to sell the convincingness of like the depth, I would actually have one of these at least like overlap and that just gives it like a little bit more uh, depth with the sphere in front. Cool, all right, done. Done. We're done with this. Saving it. Guess what? I didn't even save it this whole time. Cool. Done. Done. Yes, Justine knows. Uh, symbol sprayer tool is a fun tool to play with. Uh, and you can do a lot with it. Um, I know this description says Illustrator, Photoshop, uh, fresco as well as what I was going to dive into. Um, ooh, Tim brings up a great point. We could use a halftone pattern. That would be like super fun as well. Uh, sometimes I'll actually bring this content into, um, actually I don't even know if it'll add that much to it, but you know, sometimes I'll try some things in Photoshop. So I'll literally like select all this content, copy it, go into Photoshop, paste it in, and when I paste it in, I'm just gonna paste it in as a uh, smart object so I can edit it back in Illustrator. But this might be a case where like, I could try half tone in Illustrator, I can try half tone in Photoshop, I can try color lookup tables, I could play with the colors, I could really do anything I want. I'm just showing you the flexibility at the end of the day. And honestly, I'm probably gonna output it uh, from Photoshop. Ah, yeah, that's the plan. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see what happens. It's like, whoa, I can't do that. You're pushing me too far, Paul. You're pushing me, man. It's too early for Monday to be doing this. All right, that's what my machine is saying. All right, let's get back in. We can get more into lettering if you want. Actually, let's kind of take a look at what we did letter earlier while this loads. And again, it's like, it's like, whoa, Paul, you're driving me crazy. I'll just force quit that. You guys get the idea. We'll move past this. We did our one lettering job. 
Um, we have this one as well. Uh, we can dive into lettering in here. Let me actually turn this off kind of to, to sort of bring it back to where we were. Uh, when I was using Fresco, I actually synced all these to my desktop, right? So there's one. Here are uh, these different uh, PNG files. The PNG files I'd probably open up in Photoshop and do some fun things with as well. Okay, you got it, lettering. What is your favorite, your, your favorite least known illustrator effect? Okay, yeah, we could do, Eric, you're all over the map. <laughs> Again, I did lettering earlier. These are my results from my lettering. Look at this, look at this gorgeous. Look at this, this is like gorgeous. I just love that watercolor, right? So what am I gonna do with this watercolor, this hand lettering that I did earlier? Carvaggio is like one of my favorite artists. So he's C for Carvaggio. Take this up a little bit. I should have made it the resolution a little larger. Taking this in the center, hold on, wait one second. We're gonna jump out to, ah, what's the name of the darn museum in Amsterdam that, ah, what is it called? Tim, help me out, what's the darn, ah, trying, killing me. Rijksmuseum, R, Rijksmuseum, here we go. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brain. <laughs> check this out. I love this as a resource, by the way. So check this out. They they gladly uh, want you to remix some of their assets. So like here's Samson and Delilah, right? Taking a look at this piece right down here. I could download this artwork and get creative. Fantastic. That's exactly what I want to do. Click right there. Um, I already have a Reich Studio account, so you will have to log in, but download this image now. Download it and they're like, hey, go ahead and remix it, right? Remix it with your hand lettering too, right? Show in Finder, here it is. Photoshop, open it, beautiful. Standing on the shoulders of giants, really. Pasting this in, converting it to a smart object so we keep the resolution and we can uh, shrink this down and get this into the way we want. All right, how we doing? Reich's Museum. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you so much. Oh, I just love it. I love how they're like, yeah, go ahead and remix it. Taking this, we'll invert this text, right? So this is what we did with this hand lettering. We could do, we could try a couple other things with this. Um, I would maybe get a paper texture, which I might have in my library. Paper. Here's paper texture. All right, wait for it. Wait for it. I like this, quite frankly. Um, probably for something like this, what I would actually do is I take this text, oh, excuse me, take this, uh, this image, um, maybe kind of outline the head like so. Trying not to be too sloppy. Move this down a little bit, mask that out. And now we just have a nice sort of like depth of field that we're working with haircut of death. <laughs> Why did I pick such a, oh, such a weird, ah, <laughs> oh, killing me. Reich's Museum. Yeah, we could do an image trace as well. Thank you. I was getting into that, but I was like, okay, I could image trace it. <laughs> uh, this looks pretty good. Again, uh, number two, this honestly doesn't need anything more. There's more I can do with it, but I, I just know that like, this is probably going to be uh, sort of uh, just probably the best ex execution of this. Uh, another thing I can think about though, just since it'll take two seconds, here's that, just that quick hand lettering. We can make this top layer a clipping mask and put that inside. And now we have Carvaggio. 
And this is, this isn't, I don't even know if this is paper. This is like gold. This is ugly, right? So. Be honest with me. If something's ugly, you know, I'm not going to get better. Unless you tell me like, Paul, that's looking ugly. <laughs> Fill that with foreground. There we go. There's execution number two. You get the idea. All right, thank you, Khalil. You want me to check your portfolio? Luckily enough, we're having portfolio reviews today, so that will happen in about 10 minutes. So thank you. Tim is saying exactly what I'm gonna say. All right, Carvaggio, done, right? I'm probably gonna take some of these and post them to Instagram. How I'll typically post them to Instagram, I'll show you later because uh, I'm gonna save that for after portfolio reviews. But let's save this file. And have some fun with it. Sorry about that little camera thing that happens. All right, so let's actually save this. Save it as a cloud document. There we go. Cool. Okay, you, are you ready for, oh snap. Are you ready for a couple other things? Because you know what I didn't get into and I really want to later on uh, is actually using um, good old Photoshop on the iPad for hand lettering. Cause I can, I have access to brushes. I could use the type tool so I could set something up initially Um, and I'm back. Okay, cool. I don't know if things slowed down for a second, uh, but I can draw over that text. Ooh. Howard, I think my internet's slowing down. Anyway, all right, we're back. We are back. Okay, fantastic. Here's the text per your request, make things happen. I can vectorize this as you could imagine. Uh, what I'll end up doing a lot of times is actually kind of like redrawing it. But let's dive into this really quick. All right, so just a couple different executions. I did this on a piece of paper. Uh, we want to, uh, I'll probably want to actually crop this image so I'll typically um, crop this and make it smaller because vectorizing this, I wanna make sure this, uh, this um, image, if I go into rasterize, I wanna make sure that it's set to like screen, okay? So it's not, it's just less information for it to vectorize. It's just gonna make it easier, right? Click okay, right? We'll go up right here, image trace, right? We have all these different options. Right, chances are you're gonna to wanna to do something like silhouettes or maybe three colors, right? But let's try silhouettes since I know it's gonna be black and white. There's also black and white logo. Actually, let's try black and white logo. Boom, there it is. Oh, that did a pretty good job. There it is, black and white logo. As soon as you do that, you wanna be able to uh, expand it. As it says at the top, expand, expands it out. You wanna ungroup it because it actually got pretty complex up in here, right? There it is. As I roll over, get rid of that outline. And then uh, again, we have all these different shapes. If I select this, you can see that this is a compound path, right? So there's a couple different issues with that right there that I just need to be aware of. Oops. But uh, yeah, that's my vectorized text. Another way of doing this is taking this text, taking this down, the opacity. This is similar to what I already did in Fresco. But honestly, I think Fresco was like almost easier because I just had to 
outline it. But check this out. I'll actually, I can, I can do this a couple different ways. I could use the pencil. I could use the pen. Um, if I'm using the pencil, typically I'll just make sure the fidelity is set to smooth and that's just going to make it easier when it comes to writing. But in this case, I'll use the pen and this time I'm going to make it like much more angular. Okay. So here is a tip for you. Change this to white, or excuse me, change this from white to black. Okay, uh, appearance, we want to make sure that's unchecked like we talked about earlier. I probably need to crank up the size. We'll take a look at it in a second. I'm gonna make this much more angular, so I don't want it to be like that swooshy, right? I'm gonna have it a little bit more controlled, right? Like that, okay? Um, okay, you ready for this? I can, I can outline this, obviously. Another thing you might wanna do is consider using some guidelines, right? So I can maybe come in and say, hey, you know what? Here's a line. I'm gonna make sure these all these lines are at the same angle, right? So that's exactly the same, like so. I can make sure that the slant of these letters are at the same angle as well by drawing that out. And let's make these a little bit smaller in thickness, right, like that. And I'll typically take the second one, bring it over here, off to the side. And for these two, I'll actually use the blend tool. So with that blend tool, clicking here, clicking here, oops. That is weird that it's flipping it. Let's just move that over. Blend tool, click, click. Uh, I don't know why it's flipping it. it it's rotating it a little bit. Uh, double click on this side, specified steps. Let's change this to like seven. Let's preview it. Uh, I hate it when this happens. But um, all I want to do is I want to get those guidelines, right? So I come in here. Let's bring this up. There we go, bring that down. There we go, I just made guidelines that just kinda I wanna keep in mind uh, when I um, start to make this text. You get the idea. Cool, all right, let's move on because I'm just gonna outline this because I only have four minutes before portfolio reviews and I'm here to impress you. P for pen, let's go ahead and anchor right on that right here. Down here, we're gonna make this a little swooshy, like so. Fantastic, hit escape. This is like, let's see how fast Paul can do it. That's what this is. And I'm all for the challenge. Okay, different style, same letters, boom, boom. You can tell I'm concentrating because uh, I get quiet. Could draw out this line. And if I have the direct selection tool selected, hold on one second, pen tool, there we go. If I have the pen tool selected, holding on the option key or alt key will actually give me my curvature tool. That's what this is. I'm trying to zoom in on it. But um, with that selected, I could actually curve out that line. So option key with the pen tool Zoop, curve that like so, okay? Sorry for ignoring chat. Eric, what's up? Yeah, you can make shapes in Capture. You can't make uh, strokes, unless you know something I don't. Go, go. 
must hurry. Using the line tool, P, option key, rotate. It's kind of crazy. We get it. All right, how are we doing? Yeah, I actually started out, I showed so much today. I'm kind of, uh, my brain is spinning. Because I showed capture. Too. Forgot all about that. This is a case where this might seem like a lot of work and you would be right. But once we get these individual strokes set up, we will have total control over this uh, text, which will be fun. Option key or alt key. There we are. You get the idea. Oh, down to the wire portfolio reviews. So my uh, wonderful moderators have picked two portfolios that we will review. And uh, so that'll be fun. What do I mean we? I guess you guys will review it with me. <laughs> P for pen, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Alt key, bend it out. N for pencil, when I wanna make something smooth, I'll switch over to the pencil. There we go. All right, there we go, there we go, there we have it, our text. And this is only the beginning. Uh, as I play with this some more uh, over the course of, uh, well, the rest of today and then into uh, tomorrow, but you can see I already changed the width profile and you can see the difference between these two already, right? Look at that, right? This one already looks like much better, right? Total control. All right, Mario submitted his portfolio. They're in the spreadsheet. Tim, I should have the, I have the spreadsheet, so I'll just kind of click through it. I'm, this is gonna be a very strong design. Also, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reveal after portfolio reviews what I'm gonna do with this because I have an entirely different idea for this that's gonna be really awesome. So I'm really excited about tomorrow. I think tomorrow's gonna get more complex. Uh, not that today didn't because I think we covered a lot of things. Um, so yeah, it's all about, um, you know, being yourself, having fun, making things happen. Put that on a shirt. That is the goal. This could use so many more flourishes, right? There's also the thought of uh, doing some other things, but I'm getting ahead of myself because it's portfolio submission deadline, as you can see, as it stopped at seven, <laughs> uh, seven seconds. But let's dive into Behance Portfolio Reviews. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. Yes, that's right. Portfolio reviews today. And uh, luckily my amazing coworkers have actually picked a couple portfolios for us to review. They'll be kind of around the illustration, uh, hand lettering um, in that vein, just so you know. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna dive into now. This is just a way to provide feedback. So hopefully you like this. Where's my helmet? I know I have zero helmet and I apologize. That's embarrassing. I gotta get my act together. 
All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our first portfolio. Happens to be the lovely Guillermo Aylon or Aion. I don't know. Guillermo Guillermo Aion. That's probably something like that. It's, it probably sounds really cool. Is all I know, right? And um, yeah, from Spain. So this is fantastic. Good to have you here. I'm gonna go ahead and follow you. Um, yeah, I don't have my helmet. I hope I hope I survive on. I hope I have enough oxygen here, oxygen in this uh, in this spaceship. But Guillermo, this is his portfolio. It's project views. We can take a look at uh, his experience right over here. Art director. Uh, graphic designer for a couple years. We check out his full resume, kind of dive into this. So he does have, um, oh, studied in uh, Toronto for a little bit. Visual communication. Cool. Been working as a designer since about 2016. Good to know. Sweet. All right, so let's dive into this. Guillermo. Super cool stuff. I would say this one right here is super interesting. Sticks, sushi, and bowl. Congratulations, Guillermo. Let me know what you think. Uh, sticks, sushi, and bowl. I do have some comments on this. I like, um, I would say just be really aware of your stroke widths. So as I take a look at this, I'm, I'm tempted to want these stroke widths to either match this thickness or the thickness of this text. And it's actually somewhere in between. So I guess, I mean, your goal as a designer is to do everything with purpose. And that's what I think stands out about this is the fact that color is not being used. And that's the strongest thing uh, done here. So honestly, like the lack of things you do kind of proves you're more of a designer than the things you add. Right, so his minimalist approach, that's kind of what reveals you as a designer. Right in here are some little things like, I would probably, I feel like curving these gills with its body, because if it is on that body and you're having those warped lines, well then these should be warped as well, okay? I don't think this is really needed. It's kind of angular, like these two are kind of angular and this one's kind of wavy. Um, this is kind of like, it has that weird divot right there. I think that needs to be smoothed out. Uh, all in all, I would probably make this little fin angular and it will be stronger. I would either curve these and honestly what I would do is I would just do little lines. I would just do three little lines that are the same thickness because you're introducing a fill element when honestly it's not needed, okay? But otherwise, like I think this is strong. I think it looks great on a menu. It stands out. I think it did its job. I think a lot of times we like pick on portfolios. And at the end of the day, it's like, honestly, the client's probably happy. They probably love the job. And I think it's like very well done. Like, um, and sometimes you do things for places that like, you know what, they just, they can't afford a lot. Maybe you can't spend a lot of time on it. And I get it. Like if the client's happy and you got paid, then who am I to judge? <laughs> but uh, just be careful what you put in the portfolio. This is really strong though. This whole design of this menu is brilliant. Yeah, I use that word sparingly, so brilliant. Being able to actually see pictures like little icons, it's very clean. And I feel like I know what I'm getting, especially when it comes to sushi, right? Yeah, fantastic, love it. Oh, and by the way, uh, congratulations for not doing, for not going the, um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm thinking of? The, the obvious route. The obvious route is taking the eye and making it look like a stick or having a stick in here somewhere. You did not have a stick in here and I thank you for it like a thousand times. Don't go for the obvious if you could help it. Like it's just, it's almost too easy. Um, yeah, and I love it on black as well, Eric, I get it into it. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the other ones. Let's take a look at this Finella. First of all, it says fit, Fitnella. I thought it said V, Vitnella initially, um, because he's messing with that first letter. That's a really tough thing to do. Uh, what would make, honestly, I think, a stronger design here is if these swooshes are added as part of the flourish for the T, right? That crossbar for the T as opposed to the F, because this makes it hard to read, right? You would have added this in here, or would have added a little bit more more balance to it. Um, so yeah, 
uh, I, in general, don't mess with the first letter. Don't mess with the last letter. Have fun with the, the letters in the middle. People are going to get it. They can read. They're not idiots. Um, uh, to Eric's point, this is, these are great colors. I think it's super fun. I would also like to know more about this project and, uh, let's dive, cause I have no idea what fit Nella is. It looks like it's a fit vanilla or chocolate drink. Oh, I love the background though as well. Do I see that? This is really tough. Um, I, I don't know if I would have had text on top of text like you see right here. So I think if you're gonna create a texture in the background, uh, I'd probably keep it all icons and no text whatsoever. Scrolling down, super strong. It adds a depth to it. You uh, I'm, Honestly, I think Guillermo's strength is like color and like minimalism, super strong. So Fitnella, fantastic. <sighs> Thank you, Rosemary. Um, let's take a look at this latest one. And again, I got another portfolio, could be yours. So hang out with us. Uh, Bib, Bibora, Bibora. Ah, oh, Bibora is beautiful is what it is, right? Here's an interesting thing to do uh, if you wanted to. I could use something like, cause I'm like, is this a font or is it hand lettering, right? Um, I could at least see if it's an Adobe font by launching Adobe Capture, right? Going into, boop, taking a photo into type and pointing it at that text. I know you're not seeing this and I apologize. Trust me. I don't have, I don't know if I have time to show this, but let's just go ahead and capture this text. Ew. Okay, wait for it. Cool, all right, fantastic. Uh, can I show you this really fast? Oh, so sorry. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. I'll show you exactly what I did because this is what I wanted to figure out in the first place is if this was a font. I think it's beautiful. I think this is the strongest design. And here we are, boom, there we are. So it's not, I took a capture of this logo, which is beautiful. Can we just give it a hat and a Guillermo? This is so cool. This is, look at the subtlety of that drop shadow. You could even go a little bit more subtle, but the subtlety of that drop shadow is brilliant. This is so easy to read. It says style, uh, it's a perfect type lockup. I love it when you have uh, text underneath that's all caps. Notice how um, the italics is going the same directions, like at the same angle. It's all caps, so it provides um, a, a weight, a weight to it, like it gives it a place to rest. You're giving it an anchor, and that's really important. I typically say if you're gonna have text underneath like something else, make it all caps, and it just provides, uh, gives it like some stability, and that's ex oh, that's exactly what happens here. Uh, I just did a quick search and you know, and it's definitely not a font, not that I doubted him, but this is what uh, uh, Adobe Capture will do. So I can kind of go in here and I can see, uh, maybe he took inspiration from the O, but this is the, maybe one of the closest you get, right? And I can tell already, yeah, this is very unique. People, yeah, I'm into it. I can't, I can't tell you how much I love this. Bibora, I love this little depth right here. I don't know if I would have made these, maybe they could be flat, maybe they don't need to be, who knows? I like this depth right here, I think that's super cool. Uh, so great job. Guillermo, who's in chat? Guillermo, man, I didn't see ya. I love your work. Dude, it's really good. Hopefully you heard kinda like what we were talking about earlier. Um, but this is like super good, man. I'm, I'm loving your work and it's not easy doing this. I would, actually one thing I would say, Chances are for this design, there were like lots of other iterations or like if you can, and I get it if you can't, show the process of what it took to get here. Show some earlier versions that maybe weren't good. Maybe you can talk about why things didn't work versus why they did, whatever. But like some, you're showing the final result and I would love, it'd be kind of fun just to kind of peek, you know, um, behind the scenes. 
as well. All right, so that's about it. I'm gonna just go to Logos Volume 1. We're gonna kind of finish here. We're gonna kind of cruise through these pretty fast. Um, does the barber pole light up or move on the sign? Probably doesn't move. Yes, that would be cool. Uh, maybe it lights up. Okay, Pizza Warma. It's probably like Pizza Swarma. Cool. Modere, perfect. Live clean, love it. City green, brilliant. Can we just talk about how brilliant this is? Yeah, it's brilliant. See what he's doing here? It's like this slab serif. Um, with the rounded corners makes it look established and natural at the same time. The color choice there is perfect. Right? Really... <laughs> I print Kitchener, super cool. I don't know what this is. Alejandro Carrillo. Ah, I love this. Took me a second, but I'm really into these angles. This is brilliant. Oh, the online website for the Adobe Font can find it too. Good call, Alexander. Thank you so much. Who loves this as well? Come on now, people. Um, this is denim textiles and accessories. I think for something like this, you need to sell it to the client. Why is there, why is this I in there? Can you be like, Hey, you know what? We create personalized experiences. It's all about I or the, like you in denim. Um, something like that. I don't know. Just marketing stuff. Jujitsu. Cool. Um, I would say the one thing about this, I absolutely love everything going on here. I don't, yeah, this is, this is okay. I guess this this um, uh, thumbnail was like the least appealing to me. Like this thumbnail right here, I was like not that impressed with. Because behind that uh, thumbnail is where a lot of cool stuff was. All right, let's move on. We don't have much time. Oh, what? Nancy, Nancy. Congratulations to Guillermo, by the way. Little slight hand clap since I'm close to the mic. Let's go to Nancy, Nancy Kuda. Graphic designer, illustrator out of Beirut. I feel like she's my friend because I've known her for a while, at least virtually. Um, art attendant, graphic designer, art animator. Check out our full resume if we want. I'm glad everybody kind of fills that in. And uh, yeah, it's about 2010, 2012. Cool, Nancy. Let's dive into this because you know what? You're killing it. Ugh, you're killing me. Look at all this. Gorgeous. I get, a, I get a good sense for who Nancy is just by scrolling down this content, right? We'll jump in here and grab one, say this one that says Christmas. If you did this, like if this is yours, uh, like this is amazing, Nancy. I, oh, it says Xmas. That's the only thing I'd say is like, since you used this font, you're using a decorative font and you're adding decorations to a decorative font. I'd say the only thing is like, I didn't initially read this as an X. I was, I couldn't, I couldn't quite read it all. That's all. I think this was, I wish this was like a little bit more of a traditional X just slightly. Cause I, I had a found, I found it super hard to read. Some are better than the others. Can I just say these illustrations are brilliant though. And I'm totally like your biggest fan right now. And this is what I'm th talking about, Nancy, showing us your mood board, showing us in this situation, yeah, Ash, can we talk about this? Look at how beautiful this is. Look at her sense of color. She has a really strong sense of color. And I want to know how you did it. You know, what are your tips? You know, notice how they're all within the same hue. They're the same brightness or shade, right? Um, and they don't deviate from that. So it actually is very solid. Her strokes are all pretty much the same thickness, which is really good. And only where you, maybe you don't want them to be a, a different thickness. That kind of sticks out a little, that's totally fine. But uh, anyways, looks really good. And I'm super impressed, Nancy. Is she even here? Nancy, say something. Great job. Let's dive into this one, why not? This one gets a little bit more interesting. Or actually, no. They're all interesting. This one is also interesting. 
This is for a new wine startup. I love this. I was kind of drawn by this, I think, with all the color on your page. I kind of like why this works is also that background color. So if you have any influence in the actual display of these bottles, whether it's, I don't know, that's all I'm thinking. If it, if it comes in a box, for instance, to have that bright pink in the background. But I absolutely love this as a design. I'm all about it. Um, I would want to know why. So we want to use lines and things not to just decorate. We want to use it with a purpose. So like, what is your reasoning behind using these lines? Like, I don't know. Like is the, 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 this wine startup, is it, you know, was it created by an engineer or something like that? But I'd want to know that background. Uh, this is like, okay. This, this kind of gets into like the eighties sort of look, these squiggly lines, stuff like that. Um, what's the other word? Ugh. Oh, it starts with a B. I forget the styles. Ah, oh, driving me crazy. I did not get much sleep. Even my camera's getting a little tired. My camera's like, Whoa, I gotta rest. This is beautiful. This is a combination of the last two, and this is gorgeous. Good job. Ah. Yes, we will do more portfolios later today. Uh, can you just give your, um, there we go. Did I? I might've already appreciated that, who knows? Can we give Nancy a warm round of applause? What? Look at what you, guess what, you know what? Push the schedule back. We need another hour to review all these posters from Nancy. Nancy, I feel lazy around her now. But look at all this stuff, cool. Just having fun with it. Would love to know. Perception, fragmentation, tides, vibe. Totally interested in how she made every single one of these. You know? Fun to look at. It's fun to look at. Ah, oh, this is gorgeous. I would hang this on my wall in a heartbeat. What's up, Jose? Good to have you here, Jose. Hello, my friend. But look at this, Jose, don't you love it? Look at all these amazing pieces. So Nancy, super uh, just like honored to uh, review your portfolio to tell you you did a great job and uh, to keep it up. Like I literally have, you know, I don't have any critiques for you to be honest with you. I think you know who you are as a designer and uh, you could even see how your work has progressed too. Look at these, look at that pattern in there, right? And maybe if I scroll down, you can see how it's progressed from like some of this work, you know, just it's very much her. So I'm into it. Cool. Uh, yes. Thank you, Hakan. That's a good point. She has a style, but also is willing to try some new things. And honestly, I'm really into uh, this stuff. I think I've actually seen this one, Visualizing Science Immunology. I think I've seen this before. Um, but you know, I could easily see her doing, uh, obviously work for magazines or publishers or online publications, of course, as well, visualizing, um, data kind of is what, what this kind of looks like, but it's very cool. Right. Cool. Much props. Nancy, is she even here? Don't worry, she will watch later. I appreciate her uh, as a designer. Kind of winding down now, actually. Great job, Nancy. I could spend, again, the whole day looking at this stuff. Um, one thing I will point out is, like, if you're ever, like, doing a, any sort of collage, there might be a case where uh, the horse was drawn at a different time or in a different file. And, like, sometimes you do these composites where they're together. Just make sure, like, the stroke width is the, is the same thickness because it will just provide some nice consistency with your design, okay? And in Illustrator, when it comes down to Illustrator, uh, all that can be done. Let's draw a circle. Let's change this profile to nothing. Right in here in Preferences General, right? So we want to, we probably want to turn this off. So we want to not, don't scale the strokes and effects. So when we have that horse in here, right here's my horse whatever 
Uh, when I scale it down, the stroke width doesn't change. All right, that's all. You get the idea. There's gonna be plenty more pro tips coming at you. Uh, what I'm gonna do today probably is I'm gonna post this stuff to Instagram. This is something I was gonna do kind of at the last minute. Thank you to, uh, as well as we wrap up, to Nancy and to Guillermo, two fantastic designers. Uh, doing some hand lettering as well, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of these and then post them to Instagram uh, I typically just do a quick little airdrop and before you know it there it is That's how I get it onto my phone as I hit this little share button right up here uh, But that's where that's gonna go right if I get a chance within the next half hour because we had a full day of fun things happening and uh, Let's just make sure everybody knows what's happening. This is the schedule for today. Cool. Thanks everybody for your great work. Uh, Devils in the details are exactly right. Well done for everybody for just hanging out with me. We got a fun day. Jesse is up next. XD Daily Creative Challenge. More portfolio reviews this afternoon as well as part of Howard's segment UX UI. It's gonna be super fun. Alexander, let's hang out all day. Let's just drink lots of coffee and, you know, and go have some fun uh, designing and even prototyping and all that fun stuff today. So thanks so much for hanging out with me, Paul Tranny, as I get into some more hand lettering tomorrow, just so you know. And uh, yeah, that's what I have in store for you. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. Be nice to one another. Make sure you're washing your hands and uh, call your mom and make sure she's doing okay. And uh, yeah, make sure she's uh, washing her hands too. <laughs> That's all I got for you. Have a good one. Uh, stay tuned. Jesse Showalter is up next. And uh, yes, we will be right back. <laughs>